Derek, thank you very much for joining us today, sat here in the new uh, dugouts at the Utility Energy Stadium, just short of two weeks now into the job. How have you found it so far? Yeah, I've been very busy, obviously, coming into a new club. You've got to meet a lot of new people, um, understand the structure of the staff, uh, and really to obviously look at the, the playing side of things as well. You know, look at the squad, look at the players that we have retained, and uh, look at the additions that uh, we're going to make you know come the start of the season so it's been a you know a very busy two weeks enjoyable uh, i think that uh, always when you come to a new football club uh, it you know takes a bit of time but um you know i've been able to get to, to know a lot of people quite quickly you uh, you mentioned the business you've done a busy time we've managed to get a few players in a few players returned what's your reflection on the business we've done so far the latest of which Abu Isi yesterday yeah I mean before I came into the you know the football club um, it was uh, important that we obviously retained you know some of the players and uh, that's what the you know the club did they retained uh, a good number of players from last season and now it's you know my job to add to that and uh, over the last uh, week or so we've agreed deals with players um, we've already you know had Abo in yesterday uh, he signed we've got three others that uh, have agreed to sign uh, at this moment in time subject to medical and we've got a further uh, four players possibly to sign going on from there Andy Cook who was on loan last year uh, has rejoined so we've done a lot of good business you know quite quickly so we're in a, a very good position we've only got the four players to sign that will take the squad up to um, 24. We've got a nucleus of the squad from last year. We've got young players who you know feel that um, they can develop uh, and challenge for a first team place. What did you come to Bradford City for? You signed on a, a long term contract. What are you here to achieve? Yeah, I'm here to obviously get promotion. Um, Bradford City want to get out of this division, and uh, that's my you know plain objective is to get. Uh, us out of this division into uh, League One and then when we get there then it's obviously we've got to try and get out of League One into League Two, uh, sorry, into the Championship and uh, I think that you know that's important, uh, that's my objectives and uh, you know I think that uh, we've got to do the first step first <laughs> is to get out of League Two and uh, as you know as any Bradford City supporter will know uh, that's not an easy thing to do. Mention we're sat in the new dugouts here. A lot has gone in really to the infrastructure at the club behind the scenes over the past nine, particularly six months. How proud does that make you? How much does that fit into what we're trying to do and the forward steps we're trying to make as a club as a whole? Yeah, of course, as, as any football club and uh, a football club with the stature of Bradford City, um, the supporter base as well always wants to see excellence. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, since Ryan has come into the football club as CEO, he's tried to. Uh, instill that and uh, to take things better and uh, the small things as well as you know the bigger things and uh, I think that uh, you know having the dugouts as they were we all know what the dugouts are like before uh, they weren't the best but uh, no player will want to be you know sitting in here obviously I don't uh, sit in a dugout on a Saturday I'm out on the touchline but um, I think that it, it adds to the infrastructure of the football club and uh, there's many you know things going on behind uh, the scenes even at the training ground you know we're trying to improve that the pitches the changing rooms uh, and you know I think that that helps attract players to the football club and uh, make it better. You touched on Ryan there was a meeting initially in December you already knew each other had that relationship he made it quite clear to us within the four walls when the time came to appoint a new manager that there was only one man in his sights what is that relationship like with Ryan and how important is that for you? Yeah, you're important that um, you have a you know a very good relationship with your uh, CEO. He's the one that uh, you know we have to try and you know get on board of what I'm trying to do at the football club. Uh, you know, I'm obviously you know vastly experienced as a football manager, and uh, I think that um, it's important that uh, we rely on each other. And uh, Ryan and myself, you know, speak every day, and uh, I think that that you know helps the conversation. It allows him to understand where I am uh, as a manager going forward with, you know, signing players, and uh, you know that's why you know we can have a very good relationship going forward. So out here on a Saturday, on a Tuesday, what will a Derek Adams team look like for those who perhaps haven't seen your Plymouth team, your Morecambe team? What can they expect to see out here on a, 
on Saturday, Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, I obviously like to see my teams play attacking football from the point of view that, uh, you know, as an attacker myself, I played in a midfield position and a forward position, but also um, when you're standing in the touchline, you want to see your team uh, play with a creativity, uh, play with a, a style that uh, is going to pull the supporters in. And uh, I think that uh, my team last year at uh, Morecambe, we are the, the team with the highest chances created uh, in the division. We were up there with the highest goal scorers. And, and that was a team that uh, you know we only put together uh, at the start of the season. So that's what I want to see here. I want to see good uh, attacking play. I want to see chances created. And I obviously want to see uh, winning games. And that's what will you know take the supporters you know back in here. We've had some questions sent in by supporters. Before we move on to them, just one final one from me. You'll be sat in here very soon again as manager of Bradford City for the first time. Supporters will be hopefully back in here for the first time in 18 months. You spoke a lot about thriving under pressure, under expectation and enjoying that. How much are you looking forward to being out here as manager of Bradford City and shouldering all that, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I think that when you're in management, you're under pressure every day and uh, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, um, what size of football club you're at, the pressure is is the same. It intensifies because um, you've got a bigger supporter base and uh, that's what Bradford City you know, have. They're here, they're passionate, they want to see their team win football matches, they want to see their team get promoted and uh, I understand that, uh, I take that on board and uh, I've, from the outset I've, I've already said what I want to do, I want to get promoted and uh, you know it's all well and good sitting here and saying that, we've got to go and do it and uh, that can obviously be helped by the supporters uh, because the backing of them when the players take the field as we know over the years with the success that there has been that um, you know when they see good attacking play uh, they really enjoy it. As we mentioned some questions in from supporters first one comes from Nathan we've spoken about signings how many more do you think we need realistically in order to challenge for that promotion aim that you've, you've specified? Yeah I'm looking to carry a squad of 24 players um, that's what uh, I set to do. Uh, that gives us obviously six players on a Saturday that uh, either injury suspended or out of favour at that moment in time uh, are not in the squad. Um, we have already got agreements in place for uh, a number of players. Um, I've already said uh, in the media that I would look to sign eight players so that would take us uh, to the 24 uh, mark and uh, that would give us a, you know, a good opportunity uh, to get ourselves in a you know, a promoted position. I suppose, in a sense, that answers the next question. You've just stipulated 24 there, but various have asked on what your plan is for the size of the squad. There was a couple of arguments in, in different areas last season that a smaller squad size was often our downfall when we had things like injuries, suspensions. Have you got anything to say in response to that? I guess it's about how you deal for these, deal with these situations. Yeah, I've always dealt with a squad of 24. I think that uh, it's important that, uh, you know, having that squad size you have competition for places uh, all over the pitch. You have two players for every position. Uh, so that you know, gives us that scope. Um, and you obviously want to limit the, the injuries and suspensions. And uh, that goes with you know, how you train, how you prepare for games. And uh, I think that in any season, um, you will need that squad. We will have 18, obviously, in a match day. And uh, six of them uh, will obviously miss out. Alex asks about your plans for pre-season. We've seen the friendlies fixture now, uh, fixture schedule now announced. What do you make of them initially, and what is training going to look like, particularly in the opening couple of weeks? Is it going to be a case of pre-season back to work? Yeah, I mean, um, the pre-season games are obviously been penciled in before I came, and uh, you know it's a number of very good fixtures, a couple at home, uh, some away, and uh, it gives us. You know some action uh, to go forward. I think that uh, the ones we've got, two championship, no, sorry, a championship team, uh, and two League One teams, uh, you know, very good. It, it's a stern test for us, uh, but I think that uh, you know sometimes you want to play, you know, your games and and probably blend them in. But uh, that's the way it is, and uh, we take it as it comes. From a you know a playing point of view, we just want to. You know, get ourselves prepared, uh, fitness-wise. People will always tell you that you know we like to work hard, uh, 
with my teams, we'll have to do obviously a bit of running uh, in pre-season training uh, to get the players up to speed. What would you class as your greatest achievement as a manager so far? That's from Jacob. I, I think getting promoted is always a, uh, a great achievement and uh, I think that your last achievement is always your best because it's the next one and uh, I think that uh, the one that I had with Morecambe last year was, was terrific but uh, you know, of many good days in football and uh, you know, many more to come. Last one is from Simon. Uh, he has got in touch and he said that he's obviously pleased you're here but given your exit from Morecambe, have you bought into the long-term objectives of the club or are you purely just targeting promotion from League 2 to League 1? You answered obviously a little bit before. Um, he'd like to think that you have ambitions to move Bradford City into the Championship and beyond and build something significant here. Yeah, I mean, I think, mate, listen, we all have ambitions. We all can talk about uh, long-term plans, but uh, as we know, uh, it's never two-sided. Uh, a manager would want to stay here for 10 years, but uh, you've got to be successful. Uh, if you're not successful, then uh, on the flip side, you get uh, the sack and you get your bags thrown out the door and see you later. So um, it's a, it's a two-sided one, that one. And, uh, you know, from my point of view, um, as a manager of any football club, I need to win football matches. And uh, for me, it's to try and get us out of League Two into League One. And then can we get out of League One into the Championship? And uh, then can we get from the Championship to the, to the Premiership? It's it's as simple as that. Then can we get from the Premiership to the Champions League? You know, what else do you want me <laughs> you know, to say? It's, uh, it's, a, it's a loaded question and uh, I understand that. Very good. Thank you very much to those who have sent questions in. Derek, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.